We have to be honest with ourselves, even if it hurts. If we're going to decide our way into a better future, then we've got to develop an uncomfortable habit. And that's asking the question, am I being honest with myself? You owe it to yourself to be honest about why you're choosing to make any decision. And we probably need to ask ourselves this question twice, but on the second time, we got to add that word into the question. Am I being honest with myself really? Am I really being honest with myself? When we add that word really, we invite ourselves to pause because you've got to pause when you say it, not just for dramatic effect, but for an actual effect The reason we have to add really is because we're so prone to deceiving ourselves. Why am I doing this really? Why am I I avoiding him or her really? Why am I postponing that event really? Why do I keep making excuses really? Why do I keep saying yes really? Why did I choose to buy that Really? Why did I move in or move out? Really? Why won't I get help? Really? To answer those questions honestly might mean that we bruise our own egos. It might make us uncomfortable. It might make us look in the mirror and say, you know what, this, this is going to be a painful thing to ask. But I think that that phrase, even though it's a cliche, No pain, no gain. I think that it's true. Cliches are true for a reason, right? Because they ring true. So like Jeremiah says, why are our hearts so deceitful? Why do we tend to make bad decisions? Why do we con ourselves? And why are we prone to self-deception? Why did freshman Bri think that that shirt was going to look good on him and all the ladies were going to line up? Confirmation bias. Confirmation bias. You know this phrase? This phrase has been getting a lot of buzz the past several years, but uh, it's a concept that's been around for a bit. It's not just something that got invented into, uh, into our news cycle. Confirmation bias empowers us to tune out anything that points to the opposite of what we believe. That's what confirmation bias is. I'll give you three examples that are pretty easy to understand. Gun control, climate change, and abortion. I bet you all have some sort of opinion on those. Yeah? Yeah. We all have an opinion on some of those. Some of us might not have felt like we had a strong opinion on any of those topics until they start going through the news cycle a little bit more. And then all of a sudden, we might have some really strong feelings that we didn't know we had about those. My guess is that uh, we come across opinions that we like. Uh, if you're like me, what do you do? You, you retweet, you like, you share, you tell people. And when any kinds of opinions or facts come across us that butt up against what we believe, and they're the opposite, well, how dare you? How dare you believe something slightly different than me? <laughs> Right? We're even fighting about like nuanced things in what we believe and what we have opinions on, aren't we? Uh, how many of you have seen uh, someone just kind of go off on someone else because they're on the same like side of an opinion, but they just believe slightly different and then they're getting crucified. I remember as a kid, uh, my parents, they, they were uh, having a disagreement with someone about whatever political stance. I, I don't even remember what it was. They didn't talk politics a lot. So maybe it was, was Ronald Reagan a better president or an actor? I don't know. But um, I remember that they were still friends after the discussion. I just don't feel like I see that as much anymore. Pastor and author Andy Stanley, he said this about confirmation bias. He says, most of us want to be proven right more than we want to know what's true. We aren't on truth quests. We're on confirmation quests. Yeah. Yeah. 